so here we go. We got our new bike out here. And shall we take her for a spin? Let's turn on the power here. I just charged up the battery last night. Stand up. Turn the key on. Oh, look at that. Let's let's see how fast she can go. We'll take her out on the road. Okay. Let's take a look here. Oh. Okay, let's take a look here. Here's our bike. Look at that. Take a look at the whole bike. Very cool, huh? Today I'm going to show you how to do the conversion on this bike to uh, make this is a Roadster, Roadmaster. Turn it into an electric speed demon. Very cool, huh? Yeah, with the uh, powers that be wanting to get rid of gasoline and uh, crashing our economy, trying to get rid of uh, gasoline vehicles and everything else. I think in the future, people are going to, even now, I mean, it's a nice, cheap way to. Uh, Trans transportate yourself. You can pedal. You can get an assist if you need to go up the hill because going up hills is always a pain. There's a regen on the brakes, I believe. It, it slows the front wheel down. I believe it recharges the battery so you can recover some of the energy. Very cool, huh? Well, it seems to pedal pretty much like a normal bike here. Okay. I was worried that maybe there'd be a lot of resistance on that front tire because of the motor down there. I guess here on this side. But it seems to be doing pretty good. We'll try out the speed and see how it works. Okay, so let me get my uh, phone out. Put the GPS on and we'll see how fast we can get going on this this baby. Thousand watts of uh, motor power in the front wheel, uh, 48 volt battery, which is actually higher than 48 volts now because I charged it. It's a little bit higher. Okay, let's see how fast this thing goes. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look here. Make sure there's nobody coming, and we will get going. gonna fall off. Okay. I still have the old brakes on there. Whew. I think it's going pretty fast. Okay, so it looks like I finally got here, and this is, let's take a look at this. This is how big this box is. I'm sitting here on the floor by it, and it's a pretty good sized box. Let's take a look inside and see what's in there. Should be interesting. Okay, so here's our box, and let me um, just lay the thing down here. And take a look here. Looks like, okay. So, try opening this up. And remember, never stick your fingers in between. In fact, it says don't use a box cutter, so I'm going to be careful not to cut deep. Okay. Let's see what's inside of this thing. Should be interesting. Box has been 
damaged a little bit there. Hopefully what's inside is still okay. Okay. Okay, so there's our box. And let's open it up. Oh my gosh. There it is. There is our electric bike wheel. Okay, it's got some styrofoam parts here. Okay. Directions. Here's the directions, and looks like some zip ties and cable holders and stuff. Okay. What's this? Some kind of um, I don't know, pouch or something to hold something, maybe. onto your hub it looks like. It looks like the tire is deflated. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, so there's our tire. And looks like there's some styrofoam in the bottom. Cowboy cam here. If you haven't seen that video, sure I do this. Okay. Oh, okay, look at this. Got all sorts of crazy parts in here. I'm not sure what that is. It feels like it's oh. Very tough plastic, actually, with some magnets on it. Wow. This is a, maybe a motor controller or the battery or something. There's some things that go on your handlebars. Let's take a look here. Okay, so what's in this bag? Some wires and a controller for the throttle. And what does this say? This is a lithium battery. DC motor control by lithium battery. Okay. Brakes. Oh, there's two brakes. So there's some kind of controls that go on the brakes. And I don't think I see the lithium battery, so maybe you gotta get your own lithium battery. I don't know. What's this thing? Maybe the lithium battery goes inside. This thing, but this this thing seems like it's empty. Let's take a look what this thing is. Some kind of pouch. Okay. Oh, I guess you open it from the side. What does that say? See any bikes? Okay, so we got some kind of motor controller, some throttle and brakes, and stuff in here. And, what's this thing? 
I bet you that's some kind of sensor that senses how fast the wheel's spinning. And that other thing's got little magnets on it. If I can find it. Where did that thing go? Anyway. That probably tells you how fast the wheel's spinning. So some kind of feedback mechanism. Oh, there we go. There's a little thing that probably goes on the wheel. It's got some feedback. And what do we got here? Okay, do it yourself guide. And again, we have some kind of cable holders and zip ties. Okay. And here is the manual. Okay, very cool. So I guess these are the parts. And it has some kind of installation of the gears. Okay. But we shouldn't have to put the gears on this one because this one should be the front tire, I would think. Okay, that's a back wheel drive one. So it looks like they have the same manual for back wheel or front wheel. Okay. Oh, and there's the throttle. I'm going to have to read through this manual to see. I'm not sure if the battery is included or not. Looks like they got lots of nice pictures here, though. Okay. Okay. And here is another manual. Looks like it shows how to do the wiring. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so let's take a look here. It looks like it says details. Um, each style says motor kit do not include battery, so you need to get your own battery to run this, it looks like. And um, you can either get one that goes under the seat, like a rack, or a water bottle type. Okay, so I'll have to look into that. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look here. It says the, uh, this is the DC motor controller. It's got a bunch of stuff hooked to it. And it says it wants 48 volts. Okay, 26 amps. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so we'll have to look for a 46, 48 volt battery, it looks like, to, uh, for this controller. Okay. Okay, so let's see how much this tire weighs. We have our tire here and our scales. Now let's put the tire on to the scales. Oh, gosh. scales okay and um what is that it's about let's see maybe 18 pounds does that sound about right seems pretty heavy anyway so there we go okay 18 pounds Okay, so here is our bike tire, and uh, there's our bike I'm going to put it on, and let's take a look here. I'm just going to it comes in a bag that's all tied up. we just get it out of this bag, and we'll try to test fit it onto the frame and make sure it's going to fit, because never assume anything, right? Oh, that looks like it's tied up. Let me get this untied. Okay, so... 
There we go. There's our plastic bag. And, um... Beautiful, huh? And remember someone in the comments complaining that they put the tire on and they flipped over the front wheel. And the only way that could happen is, is if this thing is on backwards and it spins the wheel backwards. And I could see, I'm not sure which way is forward and which way is backwards, so I'm going to have to investigate this a little bit. I don't see any markings on this side. Some kind of serial number or something there. Again, this is a brushless motor, I believe. As a brushless motor driver. And I'm not seeing any markings anywhere to indicate which way this wheel is supposed to spin. Okay. Okay, I'm going to look at this a little bit more. And let's, we're going to try to fit it on this frame. Now, this is a... Uh, this is a road, Roadmaster, and I was going to put it on my truck bike, but I figured that's a nice light bike, and this is a heavy wheel, so why ruin the lightness of that bike? I'll just use that as a regular pedal bike, and I'll put this on the uh, little bit heavier bike, because this thing's going to be heavy anyway. Okay, so let's try it and see how it fits on there. Okay, a little bit more examination, closer examination. Okay, so here's our tire. And if we go up here, you can see it has an arrow that tells you which direction the wheel rotates. And so since it rotates that way, we want the wheel to roll this way. So I'm going to put the wheel on like so, with the wires on the, I guess that would be the right-hand side when the bike is uh, set up properly. And so, see it says rotation there. So we want the wheels to rotate that way because that's the way that they will roll when the bike is going forward. Okay. Okay, so let me put this on and we'll see how that looks. See, make sure it fits. Should be interesting. Okay. Okay, let's take a look here. So here is our tire, and here's our bike, and looks like there's some things that screw out here. Let's take a closer look at these in a second. Well, okay, I guess the other one doesn't screw very well because it's got wires attached to it. But let's make sure this fits on here, okay. Okay. And it looks like, oh, I have to spin the brakes out a little bit. It's going to fit on the fork, okay? Okay. And... Hmm. Actually, this part up here will be too small. Put the fit in. So we can see. Oh, wait, there's a flat. There is a flat on this. Okay, again, so here we go. So it looks like it fits within the forks. At, the, uh, at first glance, it looks like this, this uh, rod here in the middle, for lack of a better word, is, is too thick. But uh, it's actually not too thick because it's got a flat on that side. See? And so maybe if I rotate it so the flat is in there, that will provide torque against this fork. And remember, okay, rotation direction is that way. And of course, we want the wheel to spin this way if we're driving down the road. You don't want it to be backwards, or else you will flip over the handlebar. Let's see, make sure. Okay, so, again, rotation is pointing back. The tire would go like that. So if you're going 
along the road, the road would go like that along with the tire. So just making sure everything looks right. Let me uh, try to rotate this shaft. I guess that's what I should call it as a shaft. Oh, come on. So that So that that flat will go. You know what? Let me let me do this. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this. So I took off some of these parts, the nut, and there's a little thing that holds it in place. Okay, so I rotated this so that the uh, flats should go down into the shaft, but it looks like it is too thick by a little bit. So what I may do is end up modifying this so it can accept other tires rather than modifying this flat. This probably got to be hard to grind that down. It'd be easier to grind this notch out a little bit. Okay. And again, these parts were on it before. This would hold it in place. It's got kind of a square washer, which probably will to latch into that thing. And then uh, a nut to screw it down, so that's how it'll look, kind of, when it's finalized. But it looks like it's too thick to fit into our bike fork right now. Okay, so see, I pulled the tire off. And I just wanted to test fit it against this uh, fork right here, and it is definitely too wide to fit down there. It will not fit down. It's close, but it's too wide. And so I think maybe I will, I don't know, I could either grind it, which is a little bit more risky, or maybe I'll file it and uh, make these forks a little bit wider so that the bike will accept this tire Okay, I think that's the next step here. Okay, so here we have our calipers, and let's just let's just measure how thick this uh, flat is here on the the wheel. Okay, that looks like about ten, maybe nine. About 10, 10 millimeters. Okay. Well, it was a little bit less than that, but depends on how you, you want to put it to the minimum, right? Okay, well, let me see. Okay, there. 9.9 .9 millimeters. Okay, so let's uh, check to see how big our gap is on our, our uh, fork of our bike. Okay. Okay, so let's measure how wide this fork is here with our calipers. And it's about eight millimeters. So it's about two millimeters too small to fit that tire. Okay. So we'll have to maybe grind that out a little bit because I feel like modifying these and not the tire. Okay, so I was trying to decide should I modify the wheel or modify the forks. I think I'm going to modify the forks for two reasons. I mean, you could cut down the wheel a little bit and it would uh, kind of destroy the integrity of that screw. Or making the forks thinner is going to make them weaker also. So either way, it's going to uh, make the bike overall a little bit weaker. But uh, I was thinking the wheel, you know, I don't know what the status of it is. I haven't been able to test it. And uh, I don't know if it's too late to send it back or not, but if I definitely grind the bolt away, then I won't be able to send it back. And if I ever want to replace this with a different wheel, then it's probably best to modify the actual bike here. So let's, let's take a look here. Here's our bike. And uh, here's our grinder. Let's see. Oh. Okay, there we go. So we got the... make them uh, from 8 to 10 millimeters. Let's let's take a look here. Okay. Okay, so we got our bike here. Now let's just take a look here.
pretty good. Might take a long time to grind it away with uh, this grinder. I'll get my uh, calipers down here and measure that, see if we've made any progress. Okay. Okay, so here's our calipers, and let's just take a measure here. Okay, so looks like it's 8.8, 8.9, kind of at the top. I think it's not as wide at the bottom. And we'll compare it to the unground one, which is, uh, here, let's get it in there. Okay, less than eight. I think we did make some progress, but we're going to have a, quite a ways to go still. Okay, we're almost up to nine here. Okay. So I'm going to work on that a little bit and then see if we can get the front wheel into the sky. Okay. A little bit more. Okay, let's take another measurement. Okay, I've been working on this for a little while. And it looks like we are over 10 now. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay, even down toward the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start working on, see that's actually noticeably wider than the other one. So I'm going to start working on the other spoke, and then we'll see if we can fit the tire in there. And uh, then we can get this project going. Should be, should be interesting. Very cool, huh? Okay. okay, we've been working on the forks for a little bit on the other side, and here's our calipers. Okay, and let's take a look here. Looks like we're a little bit above 10 at the top on this one, too. I don't know, I might have to grind it down a little bit, but let's, let's get the tire down here, and we'll, we'll take a look and see how the, the tire fits on now. Okay. Should be interesting. Okay. Okay, so here we got our tire. Now remember you want to make sure you get the direction of rotation correct. Remember someone in the comments was saying, well, I put the tire on and it shot me over the front handlebars. The only way it could, it could do that is if the tire was spinning backwards, right? Okay, so let's just try test fitting this on here now oh I might need to undo the brakes it's not going to fit past the brakes let me undo the brakes and then we'll see if we can get that tire on there okay Okay, I got my crescent wrench here, and that's nice because it fits about any size. We'll just loosen this guy up. It's all right, righty light, righty tidy, lefty loosey. This is anti-clockwise. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Ugh. Okay, so. We'll loosen these brakes up a little bit. There we go. That ought to be enough. Look at that. Okay. And uh, let's see if we can get this tire on there for a test fit. Okay, I got all these. I, that one is already screwed out. And you can't really uh, screw it either way until you clip that uh, zip tie on there. And this one's screwed out. See, there's little, little latches here that go into probably those holes there. Probably got to put that 
washer on the other side, like so. And I'm gonna guess this washer here is gonna go. Okay, so I'll get the washer on one side, and that washer with a little uh, finger on it on the other side. And remember, tire rotation, that's going to go back because your tire is going, the bottom of your tire is going back as you're going forward on the bike, right? Visualize in your mind which way that tire is going to spin, because you don't want to stick that on backwards. And let's do this. Oh, gosh. Okay, there we go. Okay, and it looks like it is fitting into our, oh, this one's, I'm gonna have to fiddle with this, it's coming down on the other side of the washer. Uh, I may have it wider at the top than the bottom, so I may need to grind that out a little bit more, because it's only going part way in, but it could be it's getting hung up on this washer. Let me fiddle with this. And uh, we'll see if we can get this on all the way. Okay. Okay, so it looks like... There. Looks like this one's fitting in pretty much all the way. Almost far enough to get that down into that slot. Well, that slot's going to be too small, so... Uh, looks like this other one here is also fitting in, but not quite as far, so I may need to grind this side down a little bit more before I try to fit these in. Okay. Again, that's supposed to go in that hole, but it looks like, oh, I must have cut myself. That bite tire. So it's not going in as far as what I like, so I'm going to have to grind this side down a little bit more. Okay. And I think we might be close to getting this tire on. Very cool, huh? There we go. Okay, let's take a look here. So I got the tire seated on there, and it looks like that is quite a ways down into the fork. Okay. And uh, this other one here on this side as well. I guess it's not all the way at the bottom, but you know what? I think that might be close enough. And uh, I found out yeah, this is just like a grommet you can take off. So you can screw that thing in. It's not quite in there all the way. I don't know, I might fiddle with it a little bit more to make sure it goes down all the way, but this uh, finger thing is too wide to go in that hole, I think. This is probably actually made for a bigger uh, for a bike fork. Now we might be able to make do with this. Just tighten that up maybe. Okay. Now again, this one on the other side. Oh, let's see, I don't know, maybe you can pull this off. Oh, see it's zip tied on there, right there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut this zip tie, find some um, snips or something, and cut that. Okay. Okay, looks like I found myself a pair of dikes. Uh, I could tell you some stories that my buddy told me about when he was in the Navy, but probably better not. I'll just get myself in trouble. Anyway, so be careful not to cut that wire, that's for sure. Okay, so there's our zip tie is gone. And this rubber thing, oh, look at that. It goes right through the screw. Okay. It looks like you can take that rubber thing off and screw this screw down. Okay. This 
not going to go into that hole though. I don't know if I should modify these tabs or not. Hmm. I hate to modify this bike anymore because it's kind of thin there. I might just test it out as is, like so. Yeah, it's not going to be as strong as it should be, in fact, because it's cantilevered. Yeah, this little finger's making it cantilevered. Yeah, that may be a problem. But uh, just for uh, getting this project going, I can always go back and grind away some more, I guess. I can always drill out that hole some, maybe. Or something, but I just I want to get this tire on, and uh, let's see, get things going here. Okay, so let's. Uh, this will be good enough to test it out. I do believe, at least the tire is on, and it's on good enough that it can probably actually function. There we go. Very cool, huh? Yeah, that tab is a problem now. Okay. I get this thing tightened up. And uh, we can start fiddling with the electronics, maybe. Got this together. I might see this the rest of this electronics is zip tied to the tire here, so I might get this loose. Do not cut the wires. Okay, there we go. So I think we are all free here. I'm not sure why. Oh, well, I guess that is supposed to. This wire is supposed to come out that, that side like that. It's got a preferred side, looks like. Okay, so anyway. Well, let's take a look back. Very cool. Okay, we're making progress. Okay, I'll have to see what we do next to test out the electronics.